Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen strips, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first went in, and they saw and believed. For as of yet they did not understand the scriptures, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. This is the gospel of our Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. beloved in the Lord, 
Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear this promise of good news to you through our Savior, Jesus. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, And by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is risen, alleluia. Why do you seek the living among the dead, alleluia? How majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning now and will be forever. Amen. He is risen. Alleluia. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy this day the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the dead of sin and given life-given spirit through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you as the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this morning is from Job chapter 19, verses 23 through 27. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead were they engraved in rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me, This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The epistle for this morning is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 51 through 57. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for the resurrection of our Lord from, this, from the Gospel of St. Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were there saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. We confess together the Christian faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. I would invite all of our children to please come forward. What a great thing. Good morning. morning. Great to see you guys. You know what day it is? Easter. What's that mean? What's it mean? Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You know what this is behind me? A candle. A candle. That's right. Do you notice? Is the candle burning or is it out? It's burning. And when a candle is burning, what's it give off? Flame. Well, there's a flame there, that's, and it gives off heat. Smoke. But smoke, that, if you put it out, it does. But if you take that into a dark room, what will happen? Light. There's going to be light. 
Have you guys ever been in a cave? No. Sometimes if you're in a cave and they turn the lights off, it's really dark. And you can't see a thing. Do you know what you need? A candle. You need a candle. You need light so that it will show you the way. Or a flashlight. Or a flashlight, but a candle works really good. This candle is right here, and it's lit today for a very special reason. This candle is called the Christ candle. Can you guys say that? The Christ, the Christ candle, right. It usually sits up there on the altar, but today it's right here in the middle of everything, and it's lit. Do you know why it's lit? You know what we're celebrating today? Easter. Yeah. Christ is... Risen. Do you know where he was a couple days ago? He was dead. He was dead in the tomb, and there was a rock in front of it, and it was closed. And it was dark. Yeah, until the angel moved the stone, and then when the, when the ladies got to the tomb in the morning, what did they see inside? Nothing. Well, they did. They did. Yep. And the other ones weren't. There was an angel in there, and when they got there and the angel saw them, they saw the angel. If you would see an angel that's maybe eight foot tall and, and big and strong, what would, what would happen? Would you be afraid? Yeah. yeah, me too. And what's the angel say? Be not afraid. Don't be afraid. Because the light of Christ has come into the world. Jesus wasn't there in those grave clothes, was he? He was alive, and the angel said, don't be afraid, Jesus is alive. The light of Christ is born again into this world. The light of Christ is risen from the dead, and that's why we celebrate Jesus. Do you know anybody that's been dead and back to life again? I know Jesus, and that happened to Jesus, right? Jesus was dead three days, wasn't he? And he was in the grave. And on the third day, when they went back to the tomb... What did they find? Christ is risen. risen. And that's what we say all the time in the season of Easter. When you see that candle lit right there, that candle means something very, very specific. It means Christ is risen. risen. He's not dead. And because Christ is risen, do you know what that means for you? It means, what does it mean for you? That candle means for us that one day, Christ if we, he, he will, that means that if we die someday, that we don't have to fear because you know who's going to raise you from the dead? Jesus. Jesus is. He went first. He's already been there. And he said, death will not hold him and death cannot hold you because of this right here. What's, what do we do here? This is water and God's Word. And this water and God's Word connects us to Jesus. It connects us to Jesus so that someday, if you die, Jesus will be right there and he'll say, I will bring you to where I am. I will raise you to life and you will be alive just like Jesus is. And that is our great hope today. That no matter what happens in this world, even if very bad things happen and you die... We know that you will be with Christ because he has died. Did he stay dead? No. He is risen. Yeah. He's alive today and he made a promise to you in baptism that he would bring you through death to be alive with him. And that is our great hope. Christ is risen. Let's try that once more. Christ yeah. is risen. Yeah. Hallelujah! And that is such a great thing, and we're celebrating that we have some gifts to help you celebrate Easter. Vicar is bringing them over for us, but, but why he's getting here, let's try this again. Christ is, is risen. risen. Hallelujah! That's what we say in response to that. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah! Well, if you go over there and see Vicar, he's got some gifts for you. Well, before you do that, Let's pray. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for rising. Thank you for beating our enemies. 
Thank you for giving us hope. Thank you for giving us hope. And forgiving our sins. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. And we continue with our next hymn. In the name of Jesus, amen. Will you pray with me? Father, what great good news we have heard this morning. Our Savior has beaten death in the grave and lives this day to give us hope and promise and forgiveness and peace. Strengthen us now in the bold proclamation of your word and our Savior's resurrection. In the name of Jesus, amen. Has anyone ever called you Job? You're visiting with them, you're talking about the things that are going on in your life and it's all a mess. And they just look at you and they say, boy, what did you do? You're like Job. And you know what that means. 
You know your life is a mess. Gloom, despair, and agony on me would be a step up from where you are. Broken and hurting and wondering what's next. That's where Job was. It was just a matter of hours. And everything that Job loved was gone. All of his animals stolen by foreign raiders. His land taken away. His family, his children killed. And then later, Job's health began to fall apart. Nothing good here in this story. Job and everything that he had seemed to be taken away and he was left with nothing And to make it worse, when his friends gathered around him, they accused Job. This is all your fault, Job. There is some sin here you're not confessing. Confess it, and then all of this will go away. And despite all of that, in the midst of all of that brokenness and everything gone, Job said this, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the end he will stand upon the earth, And after my skin has thus been destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my own eyes shall behold him and not another. My heart faints within me. That, my friends, is Easter joy. In the midst of all of the suffering, in the midst of Job being broken, in the midst of Job not knowing what the future would hold. Job had joy. Job had peace. Job knew that God's promised Messiah and Savior and Redeemer would take him from this world of suffering and raise him again. Job knew that his body, after it had died, would be raised and he would see the risen Christ with his own two eyes. Job knew, even though St. John hadn't written Revelation yet, Job knew that there would be no crying, no pain, no suffering, no dying because there would be no more death. Job knew those things. Today, the day that we celebrate, the events that we celebrate today, Christ rising from the dead, this is what Job hoped for and what Job hoped in. The Old Testament messianic promises were all fulfilled. The serpent's head was crushed when the nails went through Jesus' feet. And he gave up his life and forgave all of your sins. That perfect blood sacrifice there on the cross for you and for Job and for all people. As his perfect and holy blood was shed there for you. Job knew the promises of God, and he trusted in them, no matter what the outside circumstances of the world around him said, no matter what his emotions said, no matter what his friends said, Job trusted in the promises that God would send a Redeemer, and that one day Job knew he would see that Redeemer with his own eyes. Job knew that the righteous branch of the stump of Jesse is the sinless Lamb of God who would lay down his life For Job and for all of us. Jesus' body would rest in the grave, making every Christian grave a place where we wait in hope for our bodies to be raised. We wait just like Job so that we can say the same thing that he did. I know that my Redeemer lives. And that in the end, when my body is in the grave and cold, It waits and it rests and one day Jesus will call us out of that grave and we will see him. With your own eyes, we will see what we celebrate today. By one simple statement from the cross, Jesus' life comes to completion. To tell us, die, it is finished and your salvation was accomplished. The perfect life of Jesus covers all of your sin and forgives you. He gives up his spirit. His work is done. Your future is secured. Job believed all of these things. And they happened centuries after Job was dead. And they're still true today. Because of today. Today, 
We hear Job's words, and today we confess the very reason that Job had this hope. Christ is risen. risen That reading from Job comes up at times that usually aren't this joyful. That reading from Job is usually at a funeral. When we are broken, and we're mourning the loss of one that we love that's not with us anymore. Right there in the midst of our sorrow and in the midst of our grief is the hope and promise of a Savior who rose from the dead, who beat death, who beat every single enemy, and lives today to give you hope in spite of the way the world treats you and in spite of all the things that are going on in your life. Those who die in faith will rise because Jesus rose. Because when he rose on that first Easter morning, he made a promise that those who die in faith, death can hold no more, and they will rise like Jesus rose. Sin, death, and hell have been defeated, and that victory has been given to us and to all who believe. Christ is risen from the dead this day, and that gives us hope in the midst of all things. If you think this Easter hope is only a distant promise, Something that you'll pick up again on that last hour of your life or or something that God will give to you once you're dead and you can live your life now trying to figure it out on your own. You're sadly mistaken. The hope that we have this day is not a future distant hope only. It's a today hope. It's a hope for you in a broken and a busted world. It's a hope for you in gloom, despair, and agony are all you see because this hope does not change. And this hope does not go away. Easter hope, sins forgiven hope, resurrection hope, that's hope for every day. It's for every trial. It's for every temptation. It's for every bout of suffering that you go through and can't see the end of. Just look at the people in the gospel reading for today. The ladies got up early in the morning, dutiful, going back to fulfill the task that they needed to do. And right away, what are they doing? They're worrying about how we're going to get it done. Who's going to move the stone? How will we get in to finish the job? How will this happen? Worry and anxiety and all of those things following following over them. And when they get to the tomb, what has happened? Christ has already done it. He's already taken care of it. All of the things that they've worried about, all of the times that they've spent in agony and worry and anxiety... Christ is already done with. He's already dealt with it. Jesus did what they couldn't do so that they would have Easter joy that day. The stone was already moved. What they worried about, what they fretted about, what they had anxiety about, never came to be. Because Christ knew them and gave them that Easter joy that day. That is everyday joy that we have in Christ. Jesus rising from the dead. Joy for us for every day. Worry, fear, anxiety, as tightly as they try to constrict us and push aside our hope, those things are not more powerful than a Savior who walked out of death's grasp and lives today. Christ is risen. And that is every day, Jesus rising from the dead, joy for you. Peter and John went to the tomb. They saw the grave, they saw it was empty, but they didn't understand. They didn't know, even though Jesus had told them that he would be crucified, that he would die, that he would rise again on the third day, it still made no sense to them. And they went home. And the joy of Easter Day came to them. You see, we don't have to go looking for Jesus. We don't have to go pursuing some place to find Jesus. He comes to us. He rises from the dead and comes to us this day with Easter hope, with joy for you. He comes to the disciples as they're gathered in the room and they don't understand it. And Jesus says, peace be with you. And he continues to teach them. And by his Holy Spirit, they began to understand what this great celebration means. Christ is risen means that this is every day, Jesus rising from the dead day, peace for you. 
The more we dive into God's word, the more questions we have, the more we end up being like the disciples, not understanding everything. But even in the midst of our questions, even in the midst of the the big gaps where we don't understand, the promises of Christ remain. Christ is risen. And that's joy and hope and peace for you, even when you don't understand what's going on. Peter denied Jesus to the crowds. Jesus came to him and forgave him. Peter had just denied that he knew Jesus in front of all of the crowds, and instead of Jesus standing before him and damning him for his denial, Jesus comes to him and reinstates him and forgives him and continues to use him to teach and preach about this glorious day Christ is risen from the dead. That's the hope that we have. That even when we have lived our lives and and have not confessed Christ as we should or denied Him outright, we come to our Savior, we confess our sins, and our Savior forgives us and reinstates us and continues to strengthen us. That is every day Jesus rising from the dead joy. And don't forget Thomas. We can't leave him out either. Thomas was far past unbelieving. Thomas was far past doubting. He was unbelieving, not believing. And as Thomas is there, and I'm sure the disciples tried to convince him, he stands before the risen Christ, or before the disciples first, and he says, I will not believe unless I put my hand in his hands and feel his side. And when Jesus stands in front of Thomas... He doesn't damn him. He doesn't shake his finger at him. He doesn't say, oh, Thomas, you really blew it. He takes Thomas right where he is, right where he is in his unbelief, and he says, Thomas, put your hand here. Put your hand in my side. Stop your unbelieving and believe. And he did. The word of God, the word of Jesus right there to Thomas drew him out of his unbelief that he believed and could see with his own eyes that his Savior was standing in front of him. That is every day. Jesus rising from the dead, joy for you. The forgiveness of sins that Jesus accomplished for us is so powerful that that Friday when Jesus breathed his last and gave up his spirit, The cemeteries that were close by were emptied. 500 people that were dead rose to life and began parading through the town. That should tell you something great and powerful went on. That Jesus kept his promise. That he rose from the dead and defeated every single enemy that we have, including death. And he's given that hope and that promise to you. Dear saints, this Easter joy is yours. It's yours on that day when you breathe your last. And your Savior will be waiting there to take you from the dead and raise you to be with Him. But it's yours today and every single day of your life because this Savior, our Savior, has risen for you. He's forgiven all of your sins. And He promises to walk with you every single day of your life no matter what the world throws at you. And somewhere in your life, somewhere in your future, if someone says to you, man, your life is a lot like Job's, I pray that you say this, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the end he will stand upon the earth, and he will raise me, and with these eyes I will see him, because Christ is risen. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of Christ that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Create in me a clean heart.
stand as we come to our Savior in prayer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, on this glorious day, fill your people with a holy fear that at the resurrection your Son would tremble no longer, that he would raise us from death's grasp, and that we would rest in his truth, in his resurrection, and in his power to save. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray that you would be with those who lead and guide us. Bless Matthew, our synod president, Scott, our district president, John, our circuit visitor, Randy, our pastor in Christ, Dennis, our vicar. We pray that you would continue to bless the mission and the ministry at Trinity in Belfouche and Evergreen Lutheran on Pine Ridge. Bless their pastors and strengthen their proclamation. Keep them faithful to deliver your people the apostolic gospel of your son's death, burial, and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray that you would always help us to hold fast to the word preached to us that receiving it with joy, we may take our stand in it and be saved by it. Hinder all who would sow doubt into our hearts and grant us courage to confess its truth in our life and conversation. Lord, in your mercy. Bless Joseph, our president, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Frustrate the forces of evil and do not let our leaders cooperate with them or further their goals. Guard our armed forces as they stand watch for us at home and abroad. Let them serve with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray this day that you would give comfort to those who are struggling. Be with the sick and those in any need. We ask, Father, that you would uphold Ron and Judy, Rudy and Kay, Derek, Alexis and Hazel. Be with Bill and Eldon and family. Watch over Steve and Yvonne. Joanne, Lindsay, Cindy, Tracy, Martin, and Vonda. Uphold Linda and Rachel, Dale, Mike, Alex, and Jim. Be with Sue, Davis, and Abby, Jeff, Connie, Faith, Colleen, and all of those with concerns. Let the dawning light of the new creation in Christ sustain them in faith. In accord with your will, grant them renewed health, a foretaste of the eternal healing in him. Lord, in your mercy... Give us joy in your son's great victory feast as he shares it with us from this altar. In the eating of his true body and the drinking of his precious blood in faith, overcome our sins by his forgiveness and swallow up our death in his life, that we may be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Father, on this great day of joy and the resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, we especially pray that you would comfort those who mourn, with the truth of Christ's empty tomb, that in the midst of their grief they may abide in hope and in his resurrection. Be with Marilyn and Susan and their family, Debbie Berge and her family, John and Fawn Harmon and their family, Maria and family, Donna Kendall and her family, Doug and Cora and family, Greg and his family. Uphold them in faith as they await the day when you will wipe away every tear from their faces. Lord, in your mercy. We join today in singing eternal alleluias with innumerable angels in festival gatherings, with the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and with the spirit of righteousness made perfect. And we bring these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day. 
for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sin of the world. By his dying, he destroyed death. By his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do as often as ye eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand as we sing together the Nuptimitis. Thanks to the Lord, for He is good. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.
please be seated. Christ is risen. That has a way better sound than a year ago when I stood here and said that to myself, and you said it in your homes. Thanks be to God that he has brought us back together again today. Thank you for all, for everyone who helped us worship today. The, there were so many people involved in all of the events of Lent and Holy Week and Easter Sunday. Thanks to our musicians, to our organists, to our secretary, everyone who has done so much so that we might see clearly that we have no fear, that our Savior lives and promises to be with us always. Go in his peace.